Log number one. Day of recording, 1st of November, 2023, time 6 a.m. Uh, this is my first official audio log and uh, the beginning of uh, the documenting of the story. I will be focusing on this week on uh, finishing the writing part of the first act. The way it's going to work, it's... Um, it's going to have a, a prologue of some sort describing the scenery, sort of getting the uh, the, the viewer uh, and the reader into into the story. Uh, the big question that I uh, that arises in my mind uh, between these three chapters in the first act is that: do I create illustrations for every chapter, or do I stick to the the the, the two that I have in mind? Because the, the way that this is going to be formed is that with every description that I, that I create, do I depict the description that I'm saying in words and then illustrate them in, in their design? Or do I completely go the other way and, and take that away and create a contradictory vision that sort of adds more information through the illustration? So I've been doubling about that um, that idea for quite some time now. In any case, um, the the writing part of the story has been the first part at least has been mainly done in my travels. Uh, as soon as I got the idea of making this story, um, I had I always had my note packs with me. Uh, I, I would I would go everywhere and then sit down for a few minutes and, and begin writing. Uh, <laughs> I had I had like three to four different notebooks. Uh, one was for like broken ideas. The other one was like more formulated ideas, and the other one was like okay, the cleanup of all of the other ideas. I always found that easier to put random words in one and then read it back and make sense of it, and then from the making sense of that, transform it into an actual sentence. <laughs> It was um, it was how I was uh, creating uh, my my writing, my blogs, and all that. So when it came to this uh, story, um, I, I I I I I continue on the same way. I found out that um, creating creating the story before I even begin to to really formulate the way that it's gonna go helped me a lot. And uh, now that I I made a bit of pre-work before I officially begin the begin it here. I um, I found out that it helped uh, it helped me have a direction, and that's something that in any in any case in any project and in anything that you do, uh, and especially in in my art, uh, having an established direction helps me uh, elevate and and really add things to it rather than just look around for ideas so um currently so before this um audio log the the couple of weeks prior to me getting ready to uh release and and and, and create the the whole experience and how the the archiving will begin and all that i have been rereading and 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 sort of completing my my notes and my my sentences that i wrote in my notebooks into a digital format on, on my computer and that was easier for me to sort of see it uh, in in place and, and take away from it what I what I wanted and rearrange things and, and all that stuff so the first two chapters are mainly complete at the moment um, the first one being the description of the of the of the place how how everything is and and what are the characters that are you going to be seeing and sort of setting up the stage very gradually and having a bit of the past sort of to to give context on how the stonemason was perceived what he was doing and all that and the second and the, the second chapter in this is a, a direct description of how he is right now and where he's is in this tower which he is residing 
So it starts off saying um, that he's on the top floor of the tower. Uh, there's only one window, and that's the window that it's on the t uh, floor. And there is an interaction between reality and the Stone Mace's ideas and how he's trying to uh, juggle the past while living in the present. So we begin seeing his whole room, uh, lots of, lots of out of order things, uh, chaos. A word can come in mind when I was describing that. It was it was quite interesting because I was I was giving lots of descript descriptive words to describe something that I knew that I was going to be illustrating. So you know, usually when you're writing something. I would imagine that uh, you would use descriptive words so the reader can imagine what you're saying. But in, in this case, I knew that there was going to be an illustration behind it. So the imagination of the viewer seeing this will be accompanied with an actual illustration that actually depicts it. Which I found it interesting because that gave me an idea for the next and last sort of chapter of the first arc. Because what if I said to myself, um, given that I'm, I'm sort of shifting between past and present when it comes to, to explaining the story, given that this is his behavior before this event and this is the, his behavior now type of thing. So I, I, I opted out for this chapter that I'm writing now and I'm going to be focusing on this week, um, is how can I, how can I describe something in the in, in words in the chapter in in the past tense how good and great it was and then in the illustration depicted in how it was now so you're going to be understanding the layout of the room given the past is going to explain you know this this thing was on the left the this thing was on the right type of thing very directionally explaining what's happening in the in the room and what if through that we see the illustration of the present and everything is like dilapidated and destroyed and you see the remembrance of what it was before and i found that interesting because the whole point of this Ill sort of interactive story i i call it interactive story because it makes sense to me to be that way lots of interactions will be had through the compositions based on the interest of the person who's experiencing it. So imagine, let's say, the statue. So I, I remember I wrote and I began writing uh, how this statue was a symbol of humility and, and, and empathy. And I, de and I described it with the most elegant and soft sort of spoken way of, of emanating its radiance of how this is sort of Exempting. Exempting? I think that's the word. <laughs> um, exuberating, basically. Like the, the, the aura that is giving to everyone and was giving to all the people who used to come into the tower that now they're shut off in, you know, the, the slow mason is in isolation. So I imagined, um, I imagined now that I gave you all the description of what it was and, and what it meant to people, and I bring to the present, the illustration will be the present. And I, for example, break off the head or chip off some elements of it. And through the interaction, the interacting part of the story, aka you clicking on the, the statue and then imagine sort of a pop-up happening and, and you can see it up close in a different design, a different drawing, sort of just the statue. And, and you can see the cracks, you could see the, the changes. And then there's going to be an accompanied uh, text sort of describing what you're seeing. Uh, and then you're going to be giving the reason behind it. And I think that works a lot better when I'm introducing something in the past and giving its presence appearance um, because it, I'm allowing everyone to really have a grasp of okay this is how it was and this is how i'm feeling it right now there is assumptions which i think is very important throughout the story when it comes to things that if if you're experiencing something 
then everything usually is based on assumptions. So when you're experiencing this thing that I don't, I want you to have your own opinion, I'm going to allow it to be sort of like an opinionated sort of answer. Some other statues perhaps around it could be um, more driven into a conclusion that I want. So this chapter of the final act is, is quite interesting because I have to really come down to how many statues I want to be introducing and how many objects that are going to be interactable that actually have a lot of details on them. And uh, this is what I'm going to be working on this this week. The idea of, of really capturing all these uh, elements of, of detail. Um, first through writing and then the illustration part. I don't think I'm going to be illustrating anything till the third week, perhaps. Uh, or maybe the second. It depends, because every day that I come back to my writing, I usually spend a day... Uh, depicting what I what I'm feeling, what I'm seeing in my mind, and then the first day it um, it comes off very methodical. I I have some visuals in my mind, and then put the words down, and I cannot really proceed more because sometimes when I am expressing my words, I I I found that are they're really really complementing what I'm thinking, and it's nice. And it's and it's a, it's a really wonderful feeling that I that I've begun feeling quite recently, and after the day passes, and the next day comes, the second version of me comes over and just rereads it, and I understand the idea that I wanted to say, but the execution could be done better. That's what I say to myself, and I begin redoing it. I I know that for example this is gonna go A B C, and then I'm like okay. Do I want this seed to be third or do I want it to be in the beginning so I can introduce more things so I can have the 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 the, the organized chaos that I want through the writing? And usually it's the case that I would just go back and forth throughout the, the, the few days as I'm writing to just revisit things and, and rewrite them. And the reason why I, I write things first and I don't illustrate them is because through writing I have the ultimate freedom of, of, of knowing how everything will go and if I illustrate something I'm not going to illustrate something and then deviate from it for example a statue in the middle standing tall and proud and then I'm like oh but I want it to be on the floor but then I illustrated it standing up so I had to redo this the drawing again which takes more time so it's much better for me at least in my mind to make sure that the writing is correct and have good guidance in drawing the things. So yeah, I think this is um, this is a substantial vlog number one of what I'm going to be working on this week. Working on the third third chapter, describing what I'm what I'm going to be putting in all the statues that I'm going to be. Um, emphasizing and hopefully by next week on log number two I have this either streamlined in knowing exactly how it's going to go or uh, finished. I guess my biggest concern at the moment is mainly if the writing part of it flows as um as I expected to, which I feel like given that I'm working on it quite daily, it's quite hard for me to understand. But when I'm gonna be illustrating, uh, and then I come back to the thing, I'm gonna solve that because I'm gonna have both the the two parts of the art, writing and, and drawing, that it's going to allow me to to really make an informed decision on that. Yeah. This is the uh, the end of uh, log number one and uh, more ponderings and questions and blabber of the mind coming on the second one.